ego network. I mean, I think this really, this is really important because, as I was saying yesterday, there's nobody more important really in the world than ourselves. Right. And this is where the connections. We're, we're more interested in ourselves and who we are connected to. Right, and that's that's how we that's how we view the world, and that's how we view our networks. It's always, you know, who is connected to me, who is connected to them, wh you know, who is clustered together in a group, who who else knows each other, who else works together, things like that. And it's always looking out, and so. Uh, un until the technology allows us this looking at and looking out how we see fit, not how they see fit or how the technology sees fit, uh, I, I don't think these systems will work. Could you discuss a little bit about the high value networks that are out there? Valuable social networks like we discussed yesterday. You know, some people won't want to release to the public what their network is. Right. Because that's where the added value is. Right, exactly. and. Um, there are some business networks. There was uh, originally there was this network called Rise, and I think they're still around. And uh, then there's probably the most popular one, LinkedIn, and that has lots of people on it. In fact, lots of people that were at the at the seminar yesterday. And it was interesting. After the seminar yesterday, I got about three or four LinkedIn invites in the email last night. So. Um, so those are those are useful, but um, the problem is that they're. You know they have the same problem that I that I mentioned before. You have to get on and you have to be explicit, and and it doesn't quite fit the social way that that we are. And um, people that do have very good networks um, probably get on there if they get on there at all, and just maybe share a portion of their ties. They don't share everything, and um, like myself, I, I I belong to this group of basically high-tech entrepreneurs and it's a not it's a Yahoo group and everybody in this group is on LinkedIn but I hardly get any LinkedIn communications from them every time somebody is looking for something or needs some advice or wants to run an idea or a problem by everybody they do it in front of the group so that's the trusted space that's the safe space that's where the real networking happens and where, where everybody knows everybody. Right, everybody knows everybody and everybody feels safe in, in presenting this and if they don't they sometimes um, know the people on the list and they'll send a, they'll send a direct email. But um, not very much, in fact hardly anything at all, happens in this group via LinkedIn although that tool is, is available for everybody and everybody's on it. Yesterday you spoke about Nora I don't know if you could explain a little bit more as to what Nora is and what it does. Oh, okay. Well, Nora is is a real interesting um, application that that looks at doesn't look at social networks, but includes them. It looks at larger networks. It looks at larger connectivity amongst people and items and events. And Nora was invented by this fellow named Jeff Jonas and he originally started to apply this technology in casinos in Las Vegas because the casinos were real worried about card counters and and cheaters and and all sorts of people like that so they didn't want to let those people in and even worse they didn't want those people working for them in the casinos so what Nora does, and it's called non-obvious relationship awareness, is it figures out how somebody may be connected to someone else. So let's say um, somebody comes in and um, they register, they buy some chips, and then they run their name through this and they find out that this person is related to um, one of the blackjack dealers. And then this person goes to play at that blackjack table. Well, immediately they say, ah, there could be a problem here. You know, this is a relative dealing to another relative. We might be losing our shirt on this, this deal. And so they, they might ask that person to either leave or to go to another table. And what, what happened was after 9-11, the government said, hey, this looks like great technology. We should use this to look at, at, at terrorists too. And what both Jeff and I believe that that is useful in, in using technology like that or technology like social network analysis when looking at terrorists is you have to start with a known target, with a known 
either guilty party or somebody that's, that's highly suspicious. You can't let this technology just loose on data and have it look for patterns and say, ah, oh, that looks like a terrorist pattern and that looks like not a terrorist pattern because right now we don't know what a terrorist pattern is and what a non-terrorist pattern is and in fact, uh, with some of the work that I've done and what other people are doing, we're finding that there really is no terrorist pattern. People get their work done if they're doing good or if they're doing bad in similar ways. So if you look at a network map of a project team that's doing IT and a project team that's building IEDs, bombs, in Iraq, there might be a lot of similarities. There's probably a project manager, there's subject matter experts, there's administrative people, there's, there's all sorts of similar roles in, in, in both projects.